The ankh or key of life is an ancient Egyptian hieroglyphic symbol used in Egyptian art and writing, to represent the word for life and, by extension, as a symbol of life itself. The ankh has a cross shape, but with a teardrop-shaped loop in place of a vertical upper bar. The origins of the symbol are not known, although many hypotheses have been proposed. It was used in writing as a triliteral sign, representing a sequence of three consonants. This sequence was found in several Egyptian words, including the words meaning mirror, floral bouquet, and life. In art the symbol often appeared as a physical object representing either life or substances such as air or water that are related to it. It was especially commonly held in the hands of ancient Egyptian deities, or being given by them to the pharaoh, to represent their power to sustain life and to revive human souls in the afterlife. The ankh was one of the most common decorative motifs in ancient Egypt and was also used decoratively by neighboring cultures. Coptic Christians adapted it into the crux anzida, a shape with a circular rather than oval loop, and used it as a variant of the Christian cross. The ankh came into widespread use in Western culture in the 1960s, and it is often used as a symbol of African cultural identity, neo-pagan belief systems, and the goth subculture. Various authors have argued that the sign originally represented something other than a knot. Some have suggested that it had a sexual meaning. For instance, Thomas Inman, an amateur mythologist in the 19th century, thought the sign represented the male and female reproductive organs, joined into a single sign. Victor Laurid, a 19th century Egyptologist, argued that mirror was the sign's original meaning. A problem with this argument, which Lord acknowledged, is that deities are frequently shown holding the ankh by its loop, and their hands pass through it where the solid reflecting surface of an ankh-shaped mirror would be. Andrew Gordon, an Egyptologist, and Calvin Schwaba, a veterinarian, argue that the origin of the ankh is related to two other signs of uncertain origin that often appear alongside it, the was scepter, representing power or dominion, and the dead pillar, representing stability. According to this hypothesis, the form of each sign is drawn from a part of the anatomy of a bull, like some other hieroglyphic signs that are known to be based on body parts of animals. In Egyptian belief semen was connected with life and, to some extent, with power or dominion, and some texts indicate the Egyptians believe semen originated in the bones. Therefore, Gordon and Schwaba suggest the signs are based on parts of the bull's anatomy through which semen was thought to pass, the ankh is a thoracic vertebra, the dyed is the sacrum and lumbar vertebrae, and the was is the dried penis of the bull. Please before we continue don't forget to like. Subscribe and turn on the notification bell, so you get notified on our next upload. Don't forget to comment your thoughts too. In Egyptian belief, life was a force that circulated throughout the world. Individual living things, including humans, were manifestations of this force and fundamentally tied to it. Life came into existence at the creation of the world, and cyclical events like the rising and setting of the sun were thought of as reenactments of the original events of creation that maintained and renewed life in the cosmos. Sustaining life was thus the central function of the deities who govern these natural cycles. Therefore, the ankh was frequently depicted being held in God's hands, representing their life-giving power. The Egyptians also believed that when they died, their individual lives could be renewed in the same manner as life in general. For this reason, the gods were often depicted in tombs giving ankh signs to humans, usually the pharaoh. As the sign represented the power to bestow life, humans other than the pharaoh were rarely shown receiving or holding the ankh before the end of the Middle Kingdom, although this convention weakened thereafter. The pharaoh to some extent represented Egypt as a whole, so by giving the sign to him, the gods granted life to the entire nation. By extension of the concept of life, the ankh could signify air or water. In artwork, gods hold the ankh up to the nose of the king offering him the breath of life. Hand fans were another symbol of air in Egyptian iconography, and the human servants who normally carried fans behind the king were sometimes replaced in artwork by personified ankh signs with arms. In scenes of ritual purification, in which water was poured over the king or a deceased commoner, the zigzag lines that normally represented water could be replaced by chains of ankh signs. The ankh may have been used decoratively more than any other hieroglyphic sign. Mirrors, mirror cases, and floral bouquets were made in its shape, given that the sign was used in writing the name of each of these objects. Some other objects, such as libation vessels and sistra, were also shaped like the sign. The sign appeared very commonly in the decoration of architectural forms such as the walls and shrines within temples. In contexts such as these, the sign often appeared together with the was and dyed signs, which together signified life, dominion, and stability. In some decorative friezes in temples, all three signs, or the ankh and was alone, were positioned above the hieroglyph for a basket that represented the word all, all life and power or all life, power, and stability. Some deities, such as Ptah and Osiris, could be depicted holding a was scepter that incorporated elements of the Ankh and Dyed. Amulets made in the shape of hieroglyphic signs were meant to impart to the wearer the qualities represented by the sign. The Egyptians wore amulets in daily life as well as placing them in tombs to ensure the well-being of the deceased in the afterlife. 
Ankh-shaped amulets first appeared late in the Old Kingdom, circa 2700 to 2200 BC, and continued to be used into the late 1st millennium BC. Yet they were rare, despite the importance of the symbol. Amulets shaped like a composite sign that incorporated the Ankh, was, and yet were more widespread. Ankh signs in two-dimensional art were typically painted blue or black. The earliest Ankh amulets were often made of gold or electrum, a gold and silver alloy. Egyptian faience, a ceramic that was usually blue or green, was the most common material for Ankh amulets in later times, perhaps because its color represented life and regeneration. If you would like to support the channel please check out our Patreon. You would also enjoy exclusive benefits like customized merches, artifacts, shoutouts, and a whole lot more. Click link in the description to join the family by subscribing to a membership. The people of Syria and Canaan adopted many Egyptian artistic motifs during the Middle Bronze Age, including hieroglyphs, of which the Ankh was by far the most common. It was often placed next to various figures in artwork or shown being held by Egyptian deities who had come to be worshipped in the ancient Near East. It was sometimes used to represent water or fertility. Elsewhere in the Near East, the sign was incorporated into Anatolian hieroglyphs to represent the word for life, and the sign was used in the artwork of the Minoan civilization centered on Crete. Minoan artwork sometimes combined the Ankh, or the related Tiat sign, with the Minoan double-axe emblem. Artwork in the Meroitic Kingdom, which lay south of Egypt and was heavily influenced by its religion, features the Ankh prominently. It appears in temples and funerary art in many of the same contexts as in Egypt, and it is also one of the most common motifs in the decoration of Meroitic pottery. The Ankh was one of the few ancient Egyptian artistic motifs that continued to be used after the Christianization of Egypt during the 4th and 5th centuries AD. The sign resembles the storogram, a sign that resembles a Christian cross with a loop to the right of the upper bar and was used by early Christians as a monogram for Jesus, as well as the crux anzita, or handled cross, which is shaped like an ankh with a circular rather than oval or teardrop-shaped loop. The storogram has been suggested to be influenced by the ankh, but the earliest Christian uses of the sign date to around AD 200, well before the earliest Christian adoption of the ankh. The earliest known example of a crux anzita comes from a copy of the Gospel of Judas from the 3rd or early 4th century AD. The adoption of this sign may have been influenced by the storogram, the Ankh, or both. According to Socrates of Constantinople, when Christians were dismantling Alexandria's greatest temple, the Serapeum, in 391 AD, they noticed cross-like signs inscribed on the stone blocks. Pagans who were present said the sign meant life to come, an indication that the sign Socrates referred to was the Ankh. Christians claimed the sign was their own, indicating that they could easily regard the Ankh as a crux anzita. There is little evidence for the use of the crux anzita in the western half of the Roman Empire, but Egyptian Coptic Christians used it in many media, particularly in the decoration of textile. Much more recently, the Ankh has become a popular symbol in modern western culture, particularly as a design for jewelry and tattoos. Its resurgence began when the counterculture of the 1960s, stirred a greater interest in ancient religions. In the 21st century it is the most widely recognized symbol of African origin in the western world and it is sometimes used by people of African descent in the United States and Europe as a symbol of African cultural identity. The Ankh also symbolizes Kemetism, a group of religious movements based on the religion of ancient Egypt. The sign is also popular in the goth subculture, being particularly associated with vampires, because an Ankh pendant appears prominently in the 1983 vampire film, The Hunger. If you enjoyed this video to the end, like comment, Share with your loved ones and subscribe so you don't miss out on our next upload.